Hi guys, Jake here from Luxury Visuals and I'm really excited to tell you about this V-Ray 5 release. Today I'm going to go over what I found useful in it and what's new. The key theme in this release is the simplicity. It feels easier to use and there are tons of time saving things that over the years you've just come to accept as a tough but essential part of using a render engine. You can definitely notice the Corona V-Ray collaboration of sharing tools in this release and I think it's a massive benefit to both Corona and V-Ray users. V-Ray 5 comes with a brand new, completely rebuilt frame buffer, the light mix and the layer comping are the real heroes of this release, but there's plenty more cool stuff to take a look at, so let's get into it. Alright, so let's start by taking a look at the V-Ray frame buffer. So the addition of light mix is huge, and those of you familiar with Corona will be aware of light mix. Basically, light mix lets you create a lot of different lighting scenarios from a single render. So you just hit render once, and you can create all these different lighting options. You can play with your lights in post, as you can see here. And I mean, you don't really have to think too much about where you're placing lights and how they're gonna affect the scene. You just kind of put them in where there are gonna be lights and you can kind of deal with most of that in the frame buffer now. I've also found this useful for creating animations for certain projects where we wanted lights turning on and off. Um, you can render once and then take still frames from the light mix. So from a single render, you can create very different light scenarios. You can change the time of day to day to night and you can turn certain lights on and off. And this gives you massive creative flexibility. As you can see here, I've created a couple of variations of the day and a nighttime shot as well. So the ability to save presets, if you save them in one folder, you can just flick through them here, which is a great addition. And you can change the light colors over here. To set up light mix is really simple. You can just open up your render settings and over in render elements, add a light mix element here. And then just hit render. And down here, select light mix from your source. Just remember that these values are multipliers, so they're actually multiplying the light value. These are not the values of the lights, so just keep that in mind. A small but useful addition to the frame buffer is the search history. So you can search for previous projects in here. So I've typed in balloon to find the balloon project I was working on before. So a nice little touch. You'll notice we also have this pixel information at the bottom now rather than having to right click. And this red border indicates that there is more image to see. So we can see that it's zoomed in and it's not there. Again, not massive, but it does show the fault that has gone into this release. The render region is now much more intuitive to use. You can resize it and you can move it around. Again, all these things sound really simple, but they just we just weren't used to having them before. Something I love about this release is these layers, and a great one is this filmic tone map. There's a few options to choose from down here, and they just add a really nice finish to your images. And some of them come with very minor um, controls and power curve you can do quite a lot with. So almost doing away with the camera raw in Photoshop, all of these layers have got opacity so you can bring it down so it's more subtle. So moving on to materials, the new material manager looks fantastic. I find the 3ds max way of handling materials horrible and i loved what corona did with theirs but v-ray have done something very similar and i believe with the next hot fix we'll be able to save and find our own materials so in that update there's going to be a auto thumbnail generator and you also notice that these render preview images are much nicer and look a lot more like what we will see in our final render. These options up here look great as well. So in this asset browser, there's over 500 pre-made materials and they're gonna significantly help us get a head start on material creation. And the V-Ray material itself now comes with a preset over here. These all have the index of refractions already set up so you don't need to go searching for them anymore. There's a couple of other options in the V-Ray material, one of them being coat, which we can find here. And you can see that that adds a varnish finish to your material. So that's gonna save you adding a blend material. And there's also a sheen here, which is more for fabrics, but it's gonna apply a fall off. 
Now moving on to textures, the V-Ray UVW randomizer has been added and I love this because when we plug this into multiple bitmaps, so using the V-Ray bitmap, we can plug this in as the source. So we used to have to change the tiling here. Well, now we can control multiple UVs with one map. So if I change this to 10 and 10, you'll see that both of these maps have updated, which I think is wonderful. And now because we have changed that to 10 by 10, we can see that it's repeating. It is a seamless map, but we can see the repeat on it quite heavily. Well, with the addition of stochastic tiling, this is going to add a random tiling to our texture. So even if your texture is seamless, you're gonna, you may get repeats and with this turned on, we can see that it's randomizing the tiling. So that is a massive addition. One thing I would love to see is the ability to drag and drop textures in as a V-Ray bitmap rather than just a default uh, 3ds Max bitmap. Another thing to note is that the V-Ray HDRI is now V-Ray bitmap, so just load your HDRIs into that. V-Ray multi subtexture is a new addition as well, and anyone familiar with CG sources multi texture will understand the power of this map. So you can have random by element selected on, and let's just render an interactive. We've got two textures plugged in here, and then we can change the random hue, and we'll see what goes on in our interactive. And with just two textures plugged in, you can get a decent amount of variation from just two boards. So V-Ray 5 is one of the first render engine releases that I've been excited about something that's more than just speed improvements. We've been given a fantastic tool set where I feel the pendulum has shifted from technical knowledge over to creative flexibility. And at the end of the day, we are artists and we want to create art. And V-Ray has offered us the ultimate Swiss Army knife. So if you want to try it out, get the trial down in the description and thanks for watching.